Hello, welcome to Sonographer Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about placental imaging. This is the fifth video in this video series with title of Ultrasound Screening for Wassa Previa. The outline of this presentation include introduction, prevalence of Wassa Previa, risk factors for Wassa Previa, Wassa Previa variants, Wassa Previa screening steps, practical points and mimics of Vasa Previa. At first, introduction. Vasa Previa is diagnosed when the umbilical vessels run through the fetal membranes not supported by placental tissue or warton jelly and are close to the internal cervical os and below the presenting part of the fetus. These vessels may rupture in labor or when spontaneous or artificial rupture of the membranes occurs, carrying a high risk of fetal death. When it's identified prenatally and patients are delivered prior to the onset of the labor or rupture of membranes, the outcome for the baby is typically excellent with a 97 to 100 survival rate. However, failure to identify Wassa Previa prenatally may result in catastrophic delivery events, including fetal or neonatal death, severe fetal anemia requiring transfusion, and cerebral palsy in survivors. The prevalence of Wassa Previa Overall, 1 per 2,500 pregnancies are affected by Wassa Previa. Risk factors for Wassa Previa At first, IVF pregnancy and multiple pregnancy, filamentous or marginal cord insertion into the placenta, resolving placenta previa, bilobed or saccenturate lobes of the placenta, third trimester bleeding. However, approximately 11% of cases have no risk factors. In a decision and cost effectiveness analysis, a screening strategies including a screening all IVF pregnancies and ultrasound screening for risk factors were found to be appropriate for clinical practice. Wasa Previa variants. Three variants of Wasa Previa have been described. Type 1 occurs when there is a filamentous cord insertion and vessels run between the umbilical cord insertion site through the fetal membranes and the placenta. Type 2 the free vessels course through the membranes between two lobes of the placenta in the lower segment which can occur in pregnancies with a bilobed or saccenturate placenta. Type 3, there are one or more large boomerang vessels which run along the margin of the placenta through the membranes. This may occur in cases with resolving placenta previa. What's a previa screening steps? There are three steps necessary in the screening for Wassa Previa. Step 1. Evaluate the umbilical cord insertion site into the placenta to ensure that the cord enters the placenta directly. Step 2. At each ultrasound examination, ensure that there is no suspicion of a bilobed or saccenturate placenta. Step 3. Re-evaluate later in pregnancy the lower uterine segment carefully in all cases of resolving low-lying placenta or placenta previa. There are important practical points for screening Wassa Previa. At first, identify placental cord insertion site into the placenta in every pregnancy. The most common ultrasound finding in cases of Vasa Previa is a filamentous or marginal cord insertion into the placenta. As in video 4 of this video series, a full explanation was provided and its link is placed in the description section. Another practical point, evaluate placenta to ensure that there is only one placental mass. We must rule out saccenturate or bilobed placenta. Another one, you can find full explanation in video 2 and its link in the description. Identify lower age of the placenta and its relationship to the internal os for rule out low-lying or placenta previa. 
also full explanation in video 3 of this video series and its link in description. Another practical point, look for bubbles and lines when evaluating the lower uterine segment and cervix. Vessels are typically first suspected on grayscale imaging using either a transabdominal or transvaginal approach, as circular or linear hypoechoic structures in the lower uterine segment. For teaching purposes, they may be more easily remembered as either bubbles or lines in the lower segment. These structures should always prompt further evaluation as vasa previa is very likely. It's important to confirm that the structures are indeed fetal vessels which is achieved using color and spectral Doppler. When there is a cluster of vessels in the lower uterine segment which seem to run in different directions, this is often an indication that there is a velamentous cord insertion at the center of these vessels. Vessels. As I explained in video 4, this feature is famous as mangrove tree sign. Another practical point, transvaginal scanning is helpful. When a velamentous cord insertion, a biloped or saccenturate placenta, a resolving placenta previa or a low-lying placenta is identified, transvaginal imaging is needed. Likewise, if the cord insertion site cannot be identified or if there is Dubbed about whether there are vessels in the lower segment, transvaginal imaging should be performed to evaluate the lower segment. The location of the vessels and their distance from the internal os should be evaluated. Transvaginal scanning complements transabdominal scanning as some vessels may be difficult to see if they run at a 90 degree angle to the transducer beam. Using transabdominal as well as transvaginal scanning enables this structure to be visualized from different angles, improving detection. Another practical point, use all transvaginal ultrasound features including real time sweeps, grayscale, color and pulsed wave Doppler. Pulsed wave or spectral Doppler is helpful to determine if vessels are arterial or venous in origin. Fetal arterial vessels will have pulsation similar to the fetal heart rate. Another practical point, reevaluate the lower segment later in pregnancy in cases of placenta previa or low-lying placenta. In video 3, a management algorithm was presented and the follow-up approach in these cases is well defined. Another practical point, lower segment can still be visualized in late pregnancy. If the fetal head is in the pelvis, especially in late pregnancy, it must be dislodged gently to allow evaluation of the lower uterine segment. This is accomplished by gentle pressure downward in the patient's suprapubic region with the free or non-scanning hand which lifts the fetal shoulder and head upward. It's helpful to have an assistant perform this manipulation and it's easier to do at 32 weeks gestation than at 30 weeks because at this time the fetal head is likely to be more fully engaged. Here we can review a teaching case together. These images showing low-lying placenta with marginal placental cord insertion and fetal vessel extending from cord insertion to the accessory placental lobe over the internal cervical os. This image at 31 weeks gestation of the same patient show the fetal head applied firmly to lower uterine segment preventing visualization of aberrant vessel. As you can see in this clip, by performing this maneuver, the fetal head is moved upward and the vessels and vasa previa are clearly identified. And this color Doppler image shows here fetal head and obvious vasa previa over the internal cervical os. Another practical point is, some cases of vasa previa may resolve before term. Due to growth of the lower uterine segment, vasa previa may resolve in up to 25% of patients in whom it's diagnosed in the second trimester. This color Doppler image at 20 weeks gestation shows the vasa previa overlying the internal cervical os. 
pulsed wave Doppler at the same time shows fetal cardiac rate in a fetal artery. At 27 weeks gestation, we can see migration of both fetal vessels from the internal cervical os. And at 30 weeks gestation, another one we can see further migration of both fetal vessels. And this image at 35 weeks gestation shows complete resolution of vasa previa from the lower uterine segment. It has been suggested that resolution should be diagnosed when vessels are more than 2 cm from the internal os. However, a more reasonable distance may be 5 cm from the internal os, but there is no definitive safe distance. Furthermore, there are no data to support such as whether patients with unprotected vessels that lie between 2 and 5 cm from the internal os may safely undergo labor and vaginal delivery. According to this data, repeat evaluation with transvaginal scanning of the lower uterine segment towards term is the best suggestion. Now, mimics of vasa previa. Phonic presentations can sometimes be confused with vasa previa, especially if the cord is close to the uterine wall. If the patient coughs or if the fetus moves, a free loop of cord will move when the amniotic fluid shifts, allowing the phonic presentation to be differentiated from vasa previa. However, the entire length of the free loop should be examined to ensure that it doesn't insert into the lower segment. The placental cord insertion site should be identified and vasa previa should be excluded. Another mimics is marginal sinus previa. Marginal sinus previa is a discontinuous venous lake at the margin of the placenta. In this transvaginal image and this schematic view, we can explain marginal sinus previa. As we can see in this image, the cervix is open. The placental parenchyma is low-lying. The placental marginal sinus descends through the open cervix to the external os. The vessels at the posterior cervix are expanded. This color image shows blood follow within the marginal sinus and also blood follow within the expanded vessels at the posterior cervix, but there is no blood follow connection between the two. Another mimics is uterine artery and vein varicocytes. This transabdominal powell Doppler image at 23 weeks gestation shows a dilated varix along the uterine cervix. Note the dilated lower segment vessels communicating with the cervical varices. Arrowhead indicates the internal cervical os. This transvaginal power Doppler image of the same patient at 28 weeks gestation showing severely dilated tortuous venous blood vessels replacing most of the normal cervical tissue. Arrowheads show internal and external cervical aura. This transvaginal grayscale image at 28 weeks gestation showed the cervical varices with two echogenic thrombi. Another mimics of vasa previa is amniotic bonds and chorioamniotic separation. You can find full explanation about chorioamniotic separation in this video, which you can find its link in description. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.